This is the e-learning podcast, episode number 47. Basically, what we decided to do is try to show how by teaching soft skills uh, for employability, we are also engaging our students into a completely new digital environment for them. Welcome to the e-learning podcast from LMSPulse.com. My name is Stephen Laddick, and I'm the director at LMS Pulse. To begin today, let me throw you a little curveball. Is it possible that during all the design and planning and chaos of creating a virtual learning experience, you might have forgotten about soft skills? I'm talking about fundamental things like communication and listening. Now, well, my guest for today, Yulia Shaltanova, thought so as well. As a business communication professional and lecturer, Yulia believes that soft skills are more essential than ever. After all, if we're looking to engage learners across new platforms and unforeseen circumstances, we might do well making sure our soft digital skills are as sharp as they can be. In this deep and nuanced conversation, Yulia and I talk about what soft skills mean in hybrid learning and working and why they are more valuable today than ever before in pretty much every context. We also talk about why developing your own digital ready soft skills goes hand in hand with a growing sense of professional awareness. There's no mystery why they are associated with better jobs and better pay. Yuli and I also talk about digital competencies and why given the sound framework on digital competencies for educators by the European Union, there really is no excuse not to have a digital skills game plan. And then finally, Yuli and I talk about how she understood that her work in online teaching needed to reflect those new lessons learned and how she moved away from lecturing as much as, much as possible to find ways to transmit her passion and continuous interest about her subjects as a way to reveal new horizons for her learners. I also invite you to check out her LinkedIn post in the show notes with resources supporting her talk about challenging your business English curricula to teach soft skills. But before we get started, a quick word from our sponsors. The eLearning Podcast is sponsored by the eLearning Success Summit. Learn from more than 40 experts how to teach, work, and learn online without being overwhelmed. Get your free ticket to the summit at eLearningSuccessSummit.com and LMSPulse.com, your best source for news, information, and resources for eLearning professionals for more than 10 years. Get our free roundup of the week's top news at lmspulse.com. Hello, Yulia. Welcome to the eLearning Podcast. How are you today? Hi, hello. Everything is super fine. This summer has came, has come already. Yes, so it is very hot and very nice, and I'm super happy to see you. Uh -huh. Hi. How is that? <laughs> well, if summer has come, everyone needs to know that we're recording this at the top of June. It's June 1st in 2021 when, we were, when we're recording this. Where, I, I know you're not from where you're sitting right now, but where are you sitting right now? I'm sitting in Berlin right now. So uh, this is where I've been living for the last uh, almost three years. Mm. And um, yeah very close to my balcony and I can see all the beautiful flowers there. Super cool. Very nice. Yulia, why don't, you know, I've already um, introduced you uh, in, you know, in the introduction and whatnot, but why, in your own words, tell us about who you are, who, you know, who you're teaching for, what you do, like what's your focus of research, those kinds of things. Okay. So uh, for the last three years uh, here in Berlin, after the relocation from Kiev, um, I've been teaching in four business schools here in Berlin. So my range of the subjects of the disciplines is for um, business management uh, students, business administration students, um, digital marketing, dig digital business, and uh, any kind of management. And the, the range of the disciplines would go anywhere from professional and business uh, communication, uh, academic writing, uh, rhetorics, uh, intercultural competencies, employability for the soft skills, uh, soft skills for employability, and um, what else, what else, what else? I personally like uh, employability for soft skills. I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, so, um, yeah, business consulting, HR consulting, and... Um, 
soft skills mainly. So in, in most mm -hmm. cases, I'm, I'm, I'm um, a linguist myself. So I have uh, the uh, bachelor's, master's and PhD in linguistics. And I have another MA, M M AD, right, in higher education. Mm -hmm. So I have these two things that are connecting, interconnecting, uh, teaching for universities, you know, creating curriculum, creating blended learning, creating high, this, this was my MA actually, how to make sure that blended learning case studies on all those, um, you know, at that time, cutting edge uh, technologies and approaches, how to make them fit into the curriculum of the tech universities, mm -hmm. right? Where there, there was no even sign of communication ever before. So this is, that was uh, the point. And um, being a linguist and, you know, doing um, a lot of studies about the communication also. So this is where it all um, becomes a, um, you know, the, the pinpoint is uh, teaching communication and skills for for university students. Super cool. This is, I mean, I'm 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 already excited for this conversation. You are <laughs> the diversity and depth of your knowledge around these topics is going to blow me away. I'm already excited. We had connected and we had started talking about a presentation that you've done recently. Um, does that you know a couple articles that you've published around methodologies for teaching, etc. Um, why don't you introduce, you know, the, the first of those articles and just take us through like what you presented, what some of the findings were, and we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, okay, sure. The latest one that um, we actually got contacted over was the uh, presentation for GIL for Use Conference, uh, which is the uh, freshly bacon uh, conference that uh, is focused on skills development for employability. Mm -hmm. So the very specific conference that uh, I was invited to help co-creating and uh, we ended up having something around like 90, 95, 100 people who joined together from, you know, the academia, educators, trainers, uh, HRs, you know, all, all the people, coaches, trainers all together to talk about skills competencies for employability. So all those trends and so on. So basically in order to fit into this uh, co conference myself, not only as a uh, co-creator and create, being a part of the uh, program committee. Um, so uh, I decided to invite my co-author and co-teacher uh, uh, to talk about our experience in teaching employability, which, mm. as you can see, became the connecting link. Yeah, for uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why it is like the interest. Like when you see something that interests you, you, you just go and flow and try to dive into it and to be there. So uh, in this case, employability connected those two things. And um, so Christina Mutsu and I were working for uh, University of Europe. Uh, which is uh, one of the, you know, top 10, I think, uh, business schools here in Germany. And they are working on the new, uh, new school syllabus, uh, which is skills-based syllabus. Uh, so they created the um, employability module, which is like three different semesters, one after another. And we are teaching the very first two, which is the uh, business communication and soft skills. Mm. And uh, basically what we decided to do is try to show how by teaching soft skills uh, for employability, we are also engaging our students into a completely new digital environment for them, because as it coincided with the corona and lockdown, and all oh, yeah, this is restrictions, yeah. Uh, as you can see that we all found ourselves in a completely new world. Um, the funny thing that I think everybody won out of uh, this specific um, overlap, I mean, our students, because uh, collaboration, uh, communication, creativity, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, um, design thinking, uh, user design, user um, experience, you, you know, UI, UX design, they're all a very rich soil for digital collaboration. Mm -hmm. And we basically, in our, in our paper, we try to show 
uh, try to critically analyze, well, is it true that we are so in love with this course, with the digital environment? Um, how come that we feel it is progressive, like that we are seeing that our students are enjoying the course, enjoying the takeaways, uh, that their feedback is very, very um, touching, you know, powerful. They, they really appreciate uh, having all those cases, all, all those discussions in their breakout rooms, working in Jamboards, in Myra, in Mural, I don't know, Quizlet, Wordwall, all those things. So Kahoot, you know, everything that you may think of became a part of our how to teach mm -hmm. uh, soft skills for employability. So basically we have these three main things uh, gone together. So uh, in order to understand if we are actually doing everything that is possible or necessary or in that way um, that is proven by, by science, by the researchers, by the educators, we decided to analyze what actually we've been doing, our activities, uh, our aims, our objectives, our you know, outcomes against the framework of the digital competence uh, education uh, framework by the European Commission. So okay. we have this framework published in 2017 um, and they are, they are given 94 pages of how the uh, digital com competences of teachers and educators influence the uh, digital knowledge and competence and attitudes, you know, skills, attitudes and um, knowledge as all together as a competency of the students. Wow. And they actually show the assessment empowering students, you know, six areas um, that is very well actually prescribed, described, uh, you know, every page is just super beautiful. You can print it out and put it on the and wall, it, and, you know, it, into it, every and each education office. Should I make the the uh, layman's assumption that in that document, the 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 less well developed the digital skills of the professor, then the you know the less well developed you know will be the students, or is that, well, is that how it follows not, or not? It's, it's not that straightforward. It shows that how specifically each of the scale from the students reiterates into uh, empowering them, working with the information, with digital information, you know, trying to show by example, trying to, you know, um, it, it's more of a, um, it's not like correlation uh, thing, but more of the formulation, how specifically, for example, given feedback empowers students and uh, the teaching and learning goes through guidance to assessment, or for example, the digital resources by themselves, uh, like uh, selecting, creating, modifying, managing, protecting, sharing data, it all goes to analyzing evidence and then, you know, mm, to facilitating okay. digital competencies into professional engagement and so on. So this is quite a comprehensive um, framework that we decided to uh, look through and try to see where what we do actually correlates with this framework like if, and so is that you kind of mapped over what actually is related yeah. to employability is that is that was that it or or is employability um, is, is, is the, that employability, the, the employability was the course that we were teaching through this okay. so um mm -hmm. it's like um we were trying to see if we are actually empowering our students with digital competencies Mm -hmm. while teaching soft skills okay. or employability course. So it's not specifically, um, well, of course it is directed for their <laughs> employability in the end because they are now creating persona in Miro, in groups, uh, you know, uh, synchronously, synchronously, they are teaming up, they're having sprints. So they have stand-ups, they are, you know, they are already doing this Kanban things and everything, you know, they are so into uh, those, those um, digital collaboration things that we are not scared that they go to, I don't know, any kind of the uh, 
a company, whether it is software or digital business or marketing, because they already are using this collaboration instrument. Um, mm-hmm. They have been doing the projects together. They uh, have been analyzing them, testing them, uh, doing the, um, the all this product cycle, you know. Right, and right, right, right. When we're presenting them with the, you know, behavioral leadership or, you know, um, I don't know, any, like, the, the different types of uh, leadership, like empowering or uh, agile or lean. And then, then they see that um, depending which company they would end up or, I don't know, or create, they will be looking for something that is already the best um, uh, um, the latest res- the, the latest uh, knowledge, right? Yeah, the they're already lo- they're, they're, yeah, they're already looking for something that fits yeah. the best practices rather than having to implement sure. them and, and sort of go into a you know an old school company and have to like mm-hmm. you know. sure and, and the fir- the first uh, seminar was more on uh, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, uh, working with all those bias, trying to work with the uh, media, media literacy was a heavy topic there, propaganda, dispropaganda, and all this stuff. So they were trying to uh, understand where they are. And um, I need to say that my specific students for this university come from 22 countries and oh. because they were locked in uh, wherever they are. So mm-hmm. it's either they are actually learning something or they're missing the semester mm. so mm. yeah it, well, it, it, i'm really interested to hear your uh, just as as kind of a sub layer here um your take on teaching so, you know, employability soft skills leadership etc like this uh, you know through the coronavirus through the pandemic of the last year where so many of these things are human oriented these are relationship oriented these are I, I can yeah. read you. I can, I can, you know, I can see what's going on. This is emotional intelligence. So if, if you wouldn't mind before you tell us sort of the second half of what this paper says, what's your experience been like, what, you know, how have your students re- interacted and reacted? Have you been able to, in your mind, did you feel like it was effective and successful to teach over a zoom or whatever it is that you used, et cetera. I, I give you the floor. This, this, this is specifically why it was so exciting to write a paper about it, because mm. we did feel that it, that was a complete success because of, um, uh, because everybody was locked in their homes, they had to collaborate together. Mm. We, they had to do the teamwork together in different time zones and so on. Uh, if it not like, if it, were not for this uh, local restrictions, it would be completely different to explain them that uh, digital collaboration, we industry, we economics, you know, um, shared economics uh, is a thing because mm-hmm. they are the first, second year students, and everything that they've seen before, it's either their school or another bachelor's degree or I don't know, maybe a gap year. So they haven't seen how the companies work, the companies which are, uh, you know, high tech or innovation companies or startups. So um, it would be much more difficult for them to express that the world works like that anyway. Mm. And in this Mm. case, that's that's the reality. So the reality came to them much quicker uh, to their first, second year then they would be waiting for it till it, you know, they finish undergrad. This sounds like something as a student, I mean, as a personally, this sounds like I would be just absolutely excited about this, right? Because if you're always, you know, when you're in university, you're always just like, oh, okay, the theory is nice, professor. But I really <laughs> just want to see what's the, rea- you know, what's the reality? Like, let me, let me, like, but that's the entrepreneur in me, right? I want to go get my hands dirty. I want to exactly. uh, you know, break the problems apart. I want to, you know, I want to actually have the real experience rather than the textbook. So it sounds that's to me like it's a, what it's a, happened. Okay, it's a win win for, for everyone, really, because then the companies also is like, are also like, wow, we actually have, newly graduated or soon to be graduates who, who actually have some experience. Exactly. And, and because the employability uh, module is not a lecture model at all. So I'm not lecturing, I don't know, 135 minutes. No, I'm not. 
I no, hope no, not. But that, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks God, any longer. <laughs> no, uh, I wouldn't be doing so maybe like eight years ago in a completely different environment and with completely different disciplines. Uh, but right now it is, um, you know, we, we created the specific uh, warming up where everybody gets together and discusses what they I don't know, read before the class or where they are in their project. So like a little warming up in their team or in a new team, so on. So they establish their connection. Then I present maybe two, three, four slides of what specifically we will be talking about. I'm giving them, I don't know, a couple of the links or I ask them to find something. Most probably we are working with the case study, for example, like on donuts and economics, on sustainable uh, economics, or I don't know, like, like very, very interesting things, the cases, and then uh, the roles and they decide and they create a gem, gem board or they create some kind of um, a case where they either present to each other or try to ask or try to solve these things or try to get different uh, parts of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I think is everything fine with the audio? I I guess. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, we're fine. I, I think we had no, like perfect. a little tiny, tiny little hiccup there, but yeah, no, I can hear you just fine. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and then they would go and and actually create something you know, out of getting the information, trying to put it together, try to analyze one against another, trying to compare in, in two different things. Or, for example, when we were trying to calculate the cultures, um, you know, index of sustainability in different parameters. There are fantastic SDG uh, website, which mm. shows you uh, different uh, countries comparing one to another, whether, whether they are, um, you know, overtaking their resources and they were trying to see and having the class of 24 countries, it actually becomes a global, um, mm, strategic session you know facilitation session when they understand they compare they discuss and they have very lovely discussions and they present uh the sessions one to another and um then i don't know then there would be uh moving forward and you know the, the next part and they would work again in the groups and all the time they are presenting their findings, they are comparing, they are uh, trying to refine where they are find, like weighting their findings and so on. And um, there are so many cases that we've worked through mm -hmm. that I do think that it was um, one of the most exciting things because it was super practical, super case oriented, super mm -hmm. examples oriented, like. I didn't know, try to find the examples from this, that, and that company and try to see which of them made a better job at some kind of the um, presenting, I don't know, humor center design or sustainability design or, I don't know, creative thinking. Or for example, we had a lovely class on um, uh, the, um, bioengineering and the uh, all this uh, all the innovative um, startups and they had to arrange the them according to their DG goals so the 21 there is a fantastic slide actually the 21 startup for the 21st century uh, from all the countries uh, they were selected somehow by jury and then they were trying to understand which goals are these startups heading towards and mm. which uh, makes them as a working unit. So like which things overlap and become feasible from the uh, economic model, from the, you know, the way they, they, they become viable. So that was a very interesting thing. So that it is entrepreneurship, it is critical thinking, it is trying to understand that there is something beyond you and beyond me. And there is like we, us and, uh, sustainability there, but but also that was the first semester. Right now they are all working on how um, they could how they could incorporate each soft skill in the teams, right, uh, for the employability. So how they can uh, learn more about it, increase their own awareness, uh, how they can.
control and to manage themselves, how they can measure the soft skill, where they are, where they want to go, what are the steps. And they're working on it uh, using the academic research, the corporate white papers, um, I don't know, the cases, the companies, they are listening to the podcast of the people sure. from those companies wow. to hear, you know, those key things like adaptability, what is Adidas doing for, you know, adaptability or something like this. And then they, um, they would be forward towards how to present themselves to the um, job interview to make sure that they know specifically how to present an, any soft skill mm. uh, there and how to use them and how to make um, decisions according to, um, you know, informed decisions uh, to according to uh, digital collaboration or creativity or, I don't know, uh, professional communication or uh, virtually anything that they choose as the topic of their interest. So yes, it is uh, something that I would only dream of when I was finishing my university. Sure, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because I can be a part of it. And I'm so excited that we are given like complete freedom about it. Like you have the uh, learning outcomes that you need to reach. So go and do this. And this is specifically why we decided to write this article because we wanted to check ourselves to prove that um, what we are doing is um, not a partisanship, you know. That we are not that we are not as a as a um, as I say, like we are not in blind in the dark room, but there there is the uh, roadmap and frameworks that exist already, and that that they are um, published, for example, by the European Committee, uh, the, the European Commission. Um, the one that I'm referring to is called um, Digital Competency Education, and that was a huge grant uh, that uh, you know the European Commission. Um, created this framework for 94 pages and uh, we try to analyze uh, whether we're fitting into this framework, whether we're doing more or less, where should we focus, maybe there is something that we're not seeing. So try to identify the blind spots, try to identify maybe um, something that we're not thinking from the practical point, but the research exists, right? And, and not only this uh, framework, we're trying to get all the things together. And yeah, we came up with those six different um, uh, areas that um, we were able we to calling, formulate. Are, yeah. we calling these, are we calling these challenges? Are we calling these next steps? Are we calling these, what, what are we? The, the areas, yeah, no, no, these are not uh, the challenges or next step. This is um, the areas of uh, professional um, digital competence for educators, mm. uh, how to bring the digital competency in students. So this is like what we should be doing, what, should, what we should be focusing on or concentrating on so that our students actually are empowered and their uh, their skills are enhanced so that we do not um how to say mm, lie to ourselves right okay so so like if how I'm, can if i'm if i'm a professor or a teacher however you want to characterize an instructor of any kind sitting out there right now is this something that I'm really excited that there's a specialized class in, in terms of digital competencies, or is this something that all, you know, going forward, we're all going to have to make a part of our toolkit, you know, like, cause I can, I can already hear, you know, thousands of people out there saying, Oh no, uh, I, I have to be as digitally savvy as my students or, or, potentially even more savvy as they are so that I can, I can increase their, is, is that, is that what, is that where your paper goes ultimately at the end of the day, or is this a module within the business school or the arts, you know, arts and humanities school or whatever that they, that they will complete? Mm, you know, as, as teachers, um, as teachers, we only need to do 
a couple of things, right? Um, the most difficult ones, but still, we need to be uh, one step further from our students so that they follow us. Mm -hmm. We should be interesting, engaged, and curious so that they would want to follow us. And we should be able to um, uh, engage and incorporate them into the active learning, into the uh, student active learning, student-centered learning, and project-centered uh, teaching. So this is specifically what I've been talking about for the last half an hour, <laughs> that uh, it's like semester long project, but every day there are a couple of the bits or items or, but they are still uh, result oriented uh, discussion, debate, learning, searching, and still discuss discussion. So the most, the most uh, learning is happening in the breakout rooms. Mm. So basically the way you design the class um, should be that what they are talking about, their takeaways, their comparisons, their wow effect happens within them so that they are comfortable to talk about it. They are comfortable to find and find this out. So it's not about digital skills for the educators that um, is the future. The future is to create all of this environment mm. that provokes, leads, excites, and shows you new horizons. So this is specifically what we are proud of and what uh, awesome. makes us, you know, to go to the conference, to share it with the world, oh, you know, to write an article, to go to another conference, to go to your podcast, uh, because it is extremely exciting. And we can see that um, our students are, I don't know, somewhere between 20, 22 and 30, I guess. Mm -hmm. So some of them are having another uh, course or the second course or after working in the industry so they come back to get a better degree in management for example so they've seen already some some life sure. but mm -hmm. what they want to do is actually um, to learn how to live in the job market 4.0 they already understand 4.0 wow already 4.0 nice all right cool yeah, <laughs> I don't know which which revolution have you missed. <laughs> I, th I think that I've missed them all. I, you know, I I mean, I knew that I knew that we were having some job revolution, but it, I, I I will embarrass myself and say, wow, I didn't know we were on four point now. That's well, great. I think this is the reason why people would go to business school anyway, right? So they want something uh, that is different, that is. Um, that is case oriented, that is project oriented, sure. that, that comes from the industry or it comes from, from um, people who are, you know. Doing uh, it. Doing it. Thinking yeah. it, envisioning it, making it happen, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And um, so ask, answering your question, um, it's, um, we were trying to, 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 um, to, analyze how far should we um, continue developing our our own digital skills because um, to create this environment so that everything is prepared everything goes smoothly um, you know what to do you know how it is built uh, the cases the work the things together I have students from China they have problems with VPN they have problems with Google instruments and so on so you need to have a lot of things in mind but ultimately it all comes to the point whether or not the group dynamics work and what they are doing within their groups has the result and those wow points though, oh gosh, I didn't realize it or mm -hmm. I never thought of it this way or this is a completely different perspective or for example, I didn't even think it could be working this way. So if this is not happening, then it doesn't matter if you have or do not have digital skills good enough. So this is uh, an opportunity for us to reflect upon how digital collaboration helped us achieve the soft skills teaching for employability in a much better way and why and share this results with all the others. 
So ultimately, this is this is what yeah. we're sharing. Yeah, sure, yeah. So, so the the one thing I haven't heard yet is the story about the some portion of the student body in your class, or you know, whomever across this this uh, this work that you did, who this didn't work for, who were either challenged by it or didn't want to do it, or said, "Look, this just I, I can't I can't handle another chat room or another breakout room." Or you know, I, we've seen a, a lot of that, especially over the last year. Tell me about yeah. tell me about those challenges. Tell me about those. Like, uh, is this just say where you you, you kind of go to them and say, "Hey, look, maybe there's a a different path that you need to take." Uh, oh, you know, this isn't the right format for you, or do we try to bring them in in a different way? Over to you. Yeah, uh, we have the four principles that we um, reflected upon uh, with Christina, my co-instructor uh, here, and we we came up with four um, principles that we think that made everything happen. So we try to focus on um, connection before recognition. So how can we try to make people uh, work together, be together, uh, connect together, connect with the class, connect with the teacher, connect within the team and with whole group before they start thinking about their task, uh, mm. course, syllabus, whatever. So this is a, um, you can call it uh, neuroscience, cognitive science. Uh, we, we've been learning through the things that connection goes first. So you really need to have first the sense of safety and security, right? If you know the brain model by hand, so this would be your part which which belongs, which works on the safety and security. So our yeah. task was to create an environment where everybody is welcome, everybody's okay to talk and okay to open up. Because, you know, when you're talking about cognitive bias or you know media literacy or uh, intercultural differences within a class of 20 to 22 countries uh, you really need to have this connection and emotional security mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we, we try to understand that we really need to make sure that the students know each other because they came, our class was their first class as the freshmen so they didn't okay. know the other the other guys and can you imagine to one class, I had like 99 students who signed up and for another like 69. So this is like huge number of people who do not know each other. And if you Absolutely. put them into the breakout room and say, do something, they would be scared to start talking. Mm -hmm. So our first principle was that through the class, through the semester, through the projects, they always have enough place, time and created environment where they can um, focus on their, you know, emotional, social needs. So we actually made the presentations of groups where they discussed, they got connected and they were trying to um, appreciate their cultural differences or trying, we did a map which shows where they are in the world so that they could make hide and seek on the digital map and try to see who they want to, um, you know, ask several questions uh, about a little, you know, questionnaire they created. So then the second principle that we understood that uh, more visuals and less uh, talking, right? So when we really need to include as many visual cues um, to create the communication effective and very um, straight to the point. So instead of, uh, I don't know, 25 slides of a lecture, which people need to read from the uh, projector, now I have like four, five, seven um, slides full of visual cues that they get much quicker as the brain gets the information much quicker and they immediately go to um to use the information to create them through the sticky notes through the pictures or within the myro mural where everything is very visualized so um that we do not spend time on i don't know reading 20 pages during the class or something like that mm -hmm. so yeah. when you understand and extend your what we are doing as the teachers and what they are doing as the class. So we are uh, making the communication much quicker. Then we try to understand that the growth mindset is uh, a huge thing, but also the mindset 
shifting from takers to makers, right? So they are not, it, it's not the real TV show when one person is speaking for 90 minutes and the other people are just playing the Candy Crush, you know, or something like that uh, <laughs> behind the yeah. black screen. So it's not an education. So we really understood that um, they need to be making everything. They need to be engaged every, all the time. They are un answering questions. They are um, uh, bringing in the results of their discussion, the result of their breakout room cooperation. So um, quizzes, uh, cahoots, uh, I don't know. If, if you need to present a framework, I would show the empty framework and give the block so that they match them within their breakout rooms because anyway, they would know at least 70% of any framework that you would give them. They're okay. super smart, super intelligent, super educated, uh, you know, young men and, and women who are uh, there for reason, right? Yeah, and right. in order to, you know, for me to give one or two specific things that one of, I don't know, 30 people doesn't know that should be their learning because it would be very diff different things for every and each of them. And in this case, uh, when they are in a team and trying to discuss which fits where, you know, all those word wall or all those um, mix and match exercises. So when you give a framework, and say, okay, so this is how you solve a business problem. Seven steps, you know, framework for solving a business problem. And they are trying to put that where they are. If they miss, that is a mistake from which they learn. Sure, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is like, sure, of course. But how many teachers are actually doing this instead of showing sure. the, yeah, the and framework? I I didn't mean to uh, to, to yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to no, I don't it. make it as, as well, but uh, whatever they can make instead of take, that was our third principle, that it should be, um, you know, um, course content created um, online con uh, creations, right? So that they create that pyramid, so that they find where their country belongs on the, I don't know, um, on the Erin Myers, uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, line, or for example, T Hall line, or I don't know, Hofstad or, or anything like this. So, um, and the fourth principle, if I may, it's just the power of asking the right questions. It's a bit of coaching, it's a bit of facilitating uh, thing, but uh, when you ask the question, which they need to find a solution within a group, it shouldn't be the immediate answer, right? There should be the discussion going. There should be the formulation that makes people exciting, excited to talk about mm -hmm. anything, right? So whatever soft skill it is, so they are in listening, in formulating, in um, trying to find the right examples they are practicing all those soft skills through all those projects. So it's not uh, any longer the instructor led lectures, right? So, or I don't know, student, uh, passive student attention. So we're trying to maintain this um, authentic interest and bring it to different environments of the uh, case studies where they can see that how it is working, how it is uh, embodied, I don't know, in this or that business situation or any kind of the uh, framework that we're studying. Fantastic, I love it. Yulia, I wanna tie this conversation in a nice little bow here. Um, you've, pr you've put a lot on the table for us and I really appreciate you sharing what you've learned over, the, especially over the last year with this, you know, uh, through this course and through your online experience with your co with your co instructor as well. Where do you go from here? So we're, you know, you're in Europe. So the, the, the school, the academic year is coming to a close. There's going to be a summer break. You're going to be looking at you know, next semester. I know there's no break for anybody, but 
what it worked what? till August. It is called <laughs> summer semester. <laughs> what What are you looking forward to most over the next, you know, for the next six months, the next year? Is there, uh, you know, a 2.0 in this research and this methodology? Is it implement this across all of your classes? Is it, you know, being the mouthpiece and being evangelical about it? Is there something that you want to try differently? What What are the things that you want to do next? Yeah, so um, you're just, you know, opening up the uh, critical, <laughs> the critical points and the further <laughs> research of the article. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the thing is that we do understand that um, um, the next year students who come would be already having this experience of working under lockdown and in distributed teams and from everywhere in the world and um, they already would know some of the some of the tools, some of the ideas. So um, it's clear for us that it would be almost impossible to repeat the same semester. Mm -hmm. uh, we it's almost clear for us that we are getting our favorite tools and we are leaning to them. For example, Christina is leaning more to mural and I'm uh, exploring how Jamboard can be super easy, super clean and super mm. straight to the point. So um, we, we, we can see that we would be expanding a range of those e-learning, but also we are formulating, we have been formulating it already that this is a medium, this is an environment, this is how you can learn soft skills. This is how you can learn soft skills for employability. But the next year, we, like nobody knows uh, what would be the uh, digital competences of the new students. So of course we will start with the uh, digital competence wheel so that we get to see uh, to see the placement, right? Where, where our students stand, what they know, what they've been doing and so on. So I can already see that some students come in with the Myra skills already. So fantastic. I think that we are going to be working even deeper in those things. <clears throat> we do understand that much more of the feedback should be implemented and most probably on the university level so that uh, it would be um, um, so, so that we could see the response from the students, not only from four classes that Christina and I yeah, are teaching, mm -hmm. but, but but most probably throughout, um, I don't know, uh, the whole university, which is, uh, which might not be the case here in Germany, because uh, the freelancers are teaching the uh, university courses, and they are doing it the way they see it, right, so we cannot, um, how to say, claim that this is the way it should be, even at the level of the university. So there are a lot of things that we are discussing, discovering and trying to show uh, the results, whether or not they are um, scalable. Mm -hmm. And um, being a business problem, like this is quite a business problem, how to scale uh, these outcomes. Right, not every teacher is ready to teach this way. Not every university is ready to uh, give it this way. And um, mm, there are a lot of implications and critical points in, in this. Uh, we can as well see that creating this readiness to um, dive into polishing your own skill set create this, you know, um, the magic power against the VUCA world, against all this volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, uh, and the black swans, uh, against, uh, you know, all, all those coronaviruses, lockdowns, whatever happens. So we can see that it empowers students to be prepared to work within the uh, business environments almost immediately. So we encourage them to go through the <laughs> summer break. As I told you, it doesn't exist in Germany. <coughs> um, 
uh, but but through inter internships and uh, volunteering, so that they see whether or not what they've been experiencing through this course um, is is actually what ha what is happening in the business environments. Mm. So that they are critical about it, so that they see uh, not like they experience and compare, uh, rather than you know creating the uh, dreamy dreams about it. So um, yeah, there are a lot of things that we can be critical about, but uh, I think this is the point where we can be um, scientifically proven. <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So you always need to to have a doubt, to check out, to refer to the latest research, to see what's happening, to go to the conferences, to go to the teacher swap shops, to go to the teacher chats. Uh, I'm a part of the um, uh, Berlin Brunderburg Teacher Association. So uh, we are creating the workshops as OTAP, for example, for the teachers, including for the e-learning, including digital competences, but also the others. So that we can measure and weigh um, these things against the reality. So yeah, that would Fantastic. be the answer for you. I am going to put a pin in our conversation there because we're going to have you back, you know, in a year. And we're going to talk about see what we're going to, I, you know, what I really like about how you wrap that up was what's going to happen in year two, right? You know, the world mm -hmm. is opening up, the universe is opening up, schools are opening up, but businesses are opening up. Uh, we've all been transformed, evolved, or, or shooken in some way by the last year of the pandemic, but we're going to return to human life here, or we are returning to human life. And so I'm really interested to see how that all of these hybrid models and whatnot come together. But thank you so much for spending some time with me today, Yuli. I really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, we will be putting a link to your research and you know some of those topics uh, in, in the podcast here for everyone to click on and contact you. But I wish you the best day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure you know, to share, uh, to care, to live and learn. So welcome. And... Um, it's really nice to, you know, to walk the talk about living and learning. So, mm. okay. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode of the eLearning Podcast. If you like what you've learned uh, today in this episode, I encourage you to either follow us or subscribe to us on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. And please do share this episode with one or two of your colleagues or friends. Also, I just want to remind you that you can level up your online learning game with all of the information that's available at the eLearning Success Summit. You can get your free ticket at eLearningSuccessSummit.com. And finally, you can also stay up to date on everything that's important, all the news and the resources for eLearning professionals at LMSPulse.com. Get our free newsletter by just going to LMSPulse.com today. Thanks again.